this episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Hi, I'm Jeff Morris, and this is my first Hangout presentation, so thank you very much. Uh, I'm thrilled to be able to do it. This is going to be a complete change of tone from Max because it's really not so much about coding as it about psychology. And uh, I can't believe you know. Okay, sounds enormous. Uh, maybe to give me a little context too, I just sort of ask, how many of you here are just um, sort of your, your, the sole content contributors to your site? And you're just running a site of your own all by yourself. Okay, you're good, because you got it covered. You don't have to worry about this stuff. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm going to bring you some examples of experiences I've had and with hope of some feedback because I'm basically telling you how to avoid all the mistakes I made and uh, some of the things that you might run into and maybe run into uh, the solutions faster than I have of how to generate a good contributing community. So in my experience, um, you have to start out with making no assumptions that People really do know what it takes to keep a blog going or how to uh, even edit online. And, and you can build it, make it beautiful, and look terribly attractive, but uh, there are barriers that people run into that often discourage them from adding to a site, uh, even if they start off with all kinds of enthusiasm. <coughs> And my third point on this slide, which is the uh, source of all of my mistakes, is that a little bit of knowledge can uh, put you in the dangerous position of becoming the help desk for many, many people. And that certainly wasn't my intention when I started to work in WordPress and uh, learn a program pretty much self-taught, although groups like this helped a lot. So, in trying to use all of the features that WordPress provides to allow people to become a, a self-sufficient community, the first thing that uh, I would run into is not everyone turns out to be that enthusiastic about learning, and you have to be prepared to give them uh, an easy way in and not leave the obstacles that will discourage people from becoming uh, a library writer or to, uh, to be able to add to the content that you want to have on your site. And without that, you're going to find that either people just drift away, you know, and say, yes, yes sure, I will, but uh, never show up, or else they're going to be at you an awful lot of the time with uh, needs, a lot of need for help. And, the first assumption that I would discourage you from making is that people will go to something like the Codex. And I'm a, a big promoter of that, too. It's a, it's a fantastic resource, but uh, one of the first things I found myself doing was finding the right page for people. So sending that link and saying, this will answer your question. Even doing that has to be on a certain sensitivity because it begins to look arrogant. It begins to look arrogant. You know, you don't, you couldn't find this online and answer your question, but um, it's not too much to ask, and once you send a link a few more times, people will generally respond. So, lowering the barriers to entry, uh, it starts with inviting you know, the, the contributors to have an account, of course, on the blog, and that will vary depending on how you're hosted. Obviously, WordPress.com treats the invitation in one way, and a site that you've privately installed and uh, put out would be different. So the first thing that I explain to people who are going to be on a, a .com blog is that they don't have to sign up for their own blog. And that was a surprising barrier to a lot of people. They felt they were being sold to, they felt that they didn't know if they had to have their separate blog independent from the one that they were being invited to. It's all very confusing. Um, 
the solution that worked best for me on that was to really have a one-page introduction that was customized to, you know, welcome to our you know, alumni site. Thank you very much. I'm excited to have you as a contributor. Here are the first three steps you have to take, and not much more than that, because too much at once you would, again, throw people off. So you want to get them to the point where they've actually signed up, gotten that email, and clicked yes, and become a contributor. Or even just a subscriber. And that can be sometimes the best first step to just get people through that, that stage. I also learned, at least on a couple of projects, that it's a good idea to work people through the stages of the roles that uh, WordPress provides. And you've probably all seen those, the user roles that limit you to either being uh, an approved contributor or an author or an editor. And it goes to that same principle. Too much information at once is more of a discouragement than an encouragement sometimes. The, um, the page and post distinctions, not obvious to a first time newbie user. And uh, it's very frustrating for people to find that they've written something and they're really excited and they love the way it looked. And it's the wrong thing. It's a page, it's not a post. So that is one of the things that we put on the initial introduction and ask people to um, familiarize themselves with that in the dashboard. In um, going to the first example, and again, you know, none of these are perfect solutions to any of this, but um, one way that uh, we recruited a lot of people to get involved in, a, in an alumni site uh, initially was to start off with a, a sandbox, actually, that was a private site. So the core team that decided to do this, and it's, it's, it's your typical, you know, college uh, affinity group uh, that wanted to, in this case, build an archive for a certain cohort in the college. Um, by going into WordPress.com and setting the blog to private, everybody could play around, they could make a lot of mistakes, not feel quite so stupid. And we also got to play around with some formatting and make decisions, which it's not exactly the way I'd recommend it because from a design point of view, you do end up with a committee. Uh, but the, the site actually did learn a lot of content. This is just a little sample of it, but I can give you the page. Um, even this page, which ultimately was put out there to get people going, and the, the green lines at the bottom are links back to the codex. They're green because that had to be the color. Couldn't be a standard hyperlink, even though it's confusing to some people, but uh, that was a choice made by the, uh, the, in the initial design team. And familiarizing people with the kind of limits that are involved in roles is important, too, because uh, you can get, in this case, of course, a very opinionated uh, group of people who not only want to see a certain type of navigation, certain types of fonts, um, explaining what some of the limitations of roles might be. You know, no, you can't add to the menu, or you could add to the menu, but if you do, you're going to throw a lot of other stuff off. Uh, is part of the education process. And in promoting WordPress as a design platform, I kept going back to its, um, its advantage is its accessibility. And <coughs> flexibility is sometimes something that can uh, stop the pull because there are too many choices to make. So in trying to uh, keep people involved and also simplify so they didn't have to learn as much as uh, it turned out there was to learn. We took a look at post by email, which is a 
feature that you can get both in, in the standard WordPress.com post and of course in Jetpack. And I'm not as familiar with Jetpack, maybe you'll come up with plugins for you. But uh, one of the big downfalls, drawbacks with uh, posts by email is it's not as perfect as it sounds. <laughs> it's going to vary depending on what email client is being used and uh, how familiar people are. I threw together a few little examples here uh, just on another little sandbox site where something that's really simple, right? missing a line feed, but for any writer who is concerned about formatting their piece and Generally, you're recruiting writers, right? They're the content contributors, and some of them are, are very particular about how their paragraphs break and indents happen. So, this little mistake was um, there on the, uh, the left side is you know, original post in Apple Mail, what I typically use. And uh, I just thought I'll put a photo in it to see how it comes out. So, I put that. Uh, and got an automatic post, of course, to my own little email address, because WordPress will give you a very specific email to go post directly to a particular site. And it comes through without a line break on the first, on the first line. And then the uh, far right side is how it actually appeared in the theme on the, uh, on the post. And oh, it's added a nice little border around the photo, which is you know, the way the theme is set up to do it. But for an author contributor who isn't aware of that, um, it can be a distressing thing. And if they try to go to debug it themselves, they can get even more, more frustrated because the uh, capabilities might not be there. Um, in this case, it turned out to be really, it's something Simple. I don't know why Apple Mail dropped the the, um, the close tag on a division only on the first line, and I did this over and over again, trying different things. Always blew the first line. Uh, I went to Gmail, trying the same thing. Gmail was fine, and then for some reason, another post that I tried again had a similar mistake. So. My, my faith in the consistency of post by email is very limited. What can help, I think, is creating an email template. And in fact, there are short codes that you can use for email. So back to put your short codes to work. Uh, that could be a big assist to smoothing the path for a non-WordPress uh, literate uh, contributor. So in another example, which is another nonprofit example, we had a little bit more success by kind of dividing the, um, the workload among specific types of contributions and, and posts. So instead of trying to recruit everybody to an individual account and getting them through all that process, this time around uh, we made one organization account, but gave the contributing staff, as it were, uh, very specific jobs and what types of posts they were going to do, or what types of pages they were going to And that focusing, I think, of the, uh, the knowledge that you really needed to apply was enough you know, to encourage people to uh, look a little further, because they got a little bite-sized bite uh, pieces of skill within WordPress themselves. Uh, in this case, um, the big key is knowing whether you're going to make your post sticky or not, which it isn't obvious to everybody. Knowing when you publicize it exactly what Twitter account it's going to go to um, and where you're going to be uh, showing up on Facebook. In, um, Updating a site like this, I'm uh, finding myself challenged at the moment, actually, um, because some of the specifics of this theme are going to be uh, not easy to carry over into a, a refresh. 
But um, there are people who are familiar enough now so that I'm not in the site with my hands on it, you know, every other week. And uh, it seems to be not falling apart either, so. Uh, a success story. Right. Uh, the, uh, the category configuration here too we took advantage of, um, you know, creating pages with uh, category posts, so that it was easy for people to say, you know, I want to go right to that topic. And on the next one, which is kind of a different case of a, of a non-profit organization, um, but again, a place where trying to get people to focus on one area. Uh, this is uh, just showing some parts of the, the site. Uh, where more than one designer involved in this. So. It's a little busy on the front page, but the sidebar shows you the, the topic areas that we were working with, and the icons are really from the front page to be the introduction to new visitors. And in this case, contributors were recruited specifically you know, to write on the topic and given their own uh, identity and their own schedule, and this was a way to try to pace out keeping the content refresh going uh, and not just sort of waiting on volunteer enthusiasm, but to um, make sure that everybody knew that, you know, this is what we're updating recycling on the second Tuesday of every month, and uh, updating household products, you know, on the third Thursday. That took a little monitoring to start, but it, it established habits. And once other people were repeatedly showing up, it was reinforcing the laggards, people who tended to procrastinate in their contribution. So it turned out to be fairly successful. Uh, the newsletter tie-in is another big way, of course, to promote this because uh, there was a summary newsletter. Everybody who contributed to this site knew that, that if they didn't have theirs done in time for the next month's newsletter, you know, there wouldn't be a link in it and their topic would be up there. Uh, those, those passions, people sometimes wane, you know, they build up an enthusiasm. Uh, we try to make a requirement to be that you had to recruit your successor. So, because we didn't want to yeah, yeah, red. This is a, a, a town's energy committee, which is actually pursuing a lot of programs that the state sponsors. So, there was important information going out to um, followers and subscribers in the town who could take advantage of it. Uh, I don't have nothing to say except that the debate that happened with this site, too, was sponsorship and whether we would get more content contributed by giving a sponsor that opportunity. Uh, as it turned out, that was, it was kind of voted down, but I think it's a legitimate way to, especially if you identify and say, you know, this is a, a commercial sponsor, but there's a lot of information for everybody to want to get out of following this blog. And, and a final example is a small company uh, which has a website that's separate from the blog. They wanted to add the blog to it. And the uh, least expensive way to do that was to set them up on WordPress.com. That was easy enough to do. And then literally nothing happened for two years. So I was beginning to find it embarrassing. You know, this is, uh, gee, you guys pay for this, you know, don't you want to do something with it? And the motivation that really began to pull people back to it was to say, this is your uh, professional platform. You know? This is where you, you've got your title and you're going to be like, 
literally showing people how to find their short link, their um, you know, account to promote and to other blogs that are in the WordPress community, actually began to generate a little more traction and um, got over that question of, you know, is this my job? Do I have to do this for my job? Well, you know, yes, it is to a certain degree, but uh, really it's your opportunity. And at least one person out of this uh, small organization began to become a WordPress enthusiast herself and uh, start looking into uh, ways of actually updating the design and adding more content to it and essentially taking over the functions. The big lesson to me out of all of this is I now have a service agreement. And you know, I'm not uh, a coder the way Max is. I'm not the person who's going to write your old site from scratch. Keep it going. But even so, the amount of work that goes into dealing with the, the support, the education, and training, maybe even the extra trainers, you know. <laughs> but, you know uh, it's, it's considerable, and uh, it is something that I think uh, I've learned how to or learn to express the value of up front. Because a lot of people will simply say, well, you know, you just need a site. Right? You just need, oh yeah, this is easy. And put it up. And they need to at least agree that when they call for help, uh, it's time that they they should compensate for it and uh, at least appreciate in some manner. It's uh, something we have to do. Covered most of my, my little uh, bits of advice here, and I would love to hear anything from anybody who has run into uh, an obstacle and found a way beyond it. Well, do you find when you take on a project that somebody else is already? working on the content contributor side? <coughs> no, that's a change you said. Projects, it was, you know, we want interaction, right? we want to build a community. Well, you know, that's, that starts not by just you know, putting it out and saying, well, I'm going to be impressed. Um, in the case of the, the town committee, we actually ended up going and taking a subscriber list for a newsletter and writing individual invitations to 200 people <laughs> saying, you know, this is what we're doing and we're looking for people who will own, you know, this area. If you really care about recycling enough, you know, can you write about it once a month? And uh, we had that pool, that original list, from another source of a, a, a public forum that people would sign up to hear about, but uh, we could take advantage of it to begin to do the recruitment stuff. So. Is in itself an art. I have no idea how much time I've taken up with the morning, so um, I'm either running early for three minutes. Or, you, have, you have about five minutes left for questions? Yes, I could certainly love taking questions for five minutes. I'm not sure if I can fill it with um, information that is uh, of use, except to say that. Um, I think a lot of people get drawn to this that I do myself. You get fascinated with all the things you can do. So you dig down and start playing with you know things that go wrong with customizing themes and you know I've got a couple of sites where I've been able to play around with the functions PHP. But part of me assumed that anybody who's gonna be drawn to the site is gonna have that same enthusiasm. And they're just gonna naturally want to go look at the codex. And they're gonna to wanna to say, you know, ooh, what does that thing do? And I thought the most mysterious thing of all was 
the uh, in the visual editor, editor uh, the button that brings up the rest of the formatting controls is not in the least obvious to anyone. Not everyone. And uh, simply pointing that out and showing people how they could use uh, a rich text editor or put it in the in Word format would, uh, would sometimes, you know, drop frustration at the top and allow somebody to take off. But uh, if you're not inclined to really explore user interface or to, uh, to hit the help button, you're going to turn to the first person you know who can give you some help. And that's going to be one invite. Since you mentioned rich text editors, uh, one thing that uh, I'm commonly running into on an, in another platform is the world thinks that Microsoft Word is the only the only editor that exists, and there's a tendency for people to compose everything in Word and then paste it into yeah. into something else, and that you know just the way Word is uh, is designed to work means that it forces all sorts of garbage HTML and stuff in there that shouldn't be there. Um, how, does WordPress have a way of, uh, of dealing with, of filtering that stuff out, of dealing with it? Well, it will strip out a lot, as a matter of fact. I, that was how that uh, little page with the, the poem, you know, break happened, because I actually tried uh, dropping that into e email as HTML. Um, but I tend to promote the simple text editors like uh, you know, the uh, Mac, um, it's my Mac text editor, you know, the one. It, and just uh, straightforward RTF files. Um, on the other hand, you're right, a lot of people don't know that they exist, but um, it tends to be a lot uh, more predictable in terms of how it's going to translate. I don't think that, I think the only thing that the um, Microsoft Word editor and the visual um, editor in WordPress does is strip out that code. And it really basically leaves you with plain text. So, uh, from there, you have to know how to reformat it. And that's, 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 that's a stumbling block for some people. So I think the best advice to give them, which you know, we tended to do, was um, start with, you know, simple. Don't try to format it first. If you really feel like you're going to need those italics and bold and whatever is all you can do, um, either do it in RTF, paste it in that way, or you're going to have to learn the, the buttons on the on the list. Software's a real problem. We should all have issues with it. Um, and list, show that you've listed will come in great. And um, what Word is quite good at is if you do a table, just a plain table, or fancy formatting, and then paste that into WordPress, you can get tables. Because it's quite difficult to do tables in the WordPress editor. Um, and, it's the same, and it's the same with Excel. You do your table in Excel first and then paste that in. Um, you're using the paste from Word option always. And then the table will come in. And I don't know if it's 3.9, 3.8, pasting from Word is now the default. 3.9? Yeah. yeah. So pasting from Word is now the default. Smart about it. And you, and you have to click the text if you want to paste this text. Yeah. Actually, that was one of the more arcane workarounds that we did for the, the college alumni site was in the sandbox, we created a table template because we have one of the color backgrounds and other things like that. And, uh, tell people to go in, copy that, paste it into the post they were going to create, and then edit it visually. And it's still messed up. Uh, it was, it was much too much to ask. It's strange that the company works great for it. They can be able to place it work with. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Too. There's a couple of very nice plugins that to great tables, strike rows, all sorts of fancy stuff. So just do a, a search for Take a shortcut and come up with a few good solutions. That's a good 